Now that we've built some effects, let's jump into pixel mapping through Dylos, the built-in pixel mapper in Onyx. We're here in our 2D plan, which is where everything starts. There's a reason why we built this earlier. It looks nice, and it's really helpful to see levels of lights on submasters, look at how your rig's laid out and select things, but ultimately, it's very beneficial when we're going to use Dylos. Heading into edit mode, we're going to press Add. And we're going to go ahead. I'm going to zoom, actually pull my options out of the way here so we can get the whole picture. And I'm going to add a zone fixture. Now, if this is your first time using Dylos within a show file, you're going to see a button here that says Enable Dylos Support. Press that button, watch the progress bar. It just takes a minute, and then you're good to go. On this console, that's already been done. So now I have the ability to choose a new zone or to place an existing zone, OK? I'm going to go ahead and place a zone fixture. And then we just draw it out. Don't worry if it's not perfect. We can move it if we need to. Perfect. Now we have our zone fixture. Our zone fixture is what defines our pixel map. It tells Onyx where the fixtures are, what their orientation is in the sense of multi-part fixtures, and so it's now going to know how to pixel map. Now that we've done that, we see in our zone we have all these sets of double arrows, and when we have our zone selected in edit mode, that allows us to resize it. We can drag the whole zone, we can resize, make it fit however we want. This also happens completely live, so in a couple minutes when we're actually playing content across this, we can resize it on the fly, and it is constantly processing it. And you can see live and on the rig those changes. Popping out of edit mode, we'll go back into live. I'm going to select my zone and now go to the Dylos tab. So when we're working with zones, as we talked about with effects, everything inside of Dylos, the pixel mapper, works the same way that the rest of the Onyx workflow is. Everything is a parameter, and the zone, the virtual screen per se, that is dragged over our fixtures, is just another lighting fixture. There's nothing more to learn, and there's not really a lot more complication to it. So we'll go in our zone here. We have this, these nice tools here to be able to work with it. And we see, as we bring our zone up, that we now are knocking out the intensity of our fixtures. That's OK, totally normal. It's the crossfade between the regular parameters and the pixel map's content, allowing you to do this seamlessly during a show. First, I'll press into source here. In the bottom, I have a lot of choices here. Now, the factory library, which you install separately from the software, as it's a large download, has, at this time, over 2,000 pieces of media. 2,000. There's a lot in there both still and moving images, OK? Now, there's also the owner and user tabs where you can bring in media, uh, whether that be photos, um, still image files, or moving images, video files. Many different file types are compatible, and you can check the support website for the full details there. Back to the factory content, across the side here, we have a number of different folders that contain the media all sorted. Just to show you, I'll go to the library, and we can go through our different folders and see all of our media. It's all right here. The factory media, as well as the owner media, stays with the console. So when you start a new show, you get all of that media in there. The user media is show by show, but it can be imported and exported between different shows. Back to the Dialist tab, we'll select a piece of media here. I'm going to choose something with color, choose this nice stained glass, as I like to call it. I'm also going to put my lights into a position. Awesome. And now we see we've pixel mapped. It's really that simple. 
we've got our video coming across our lights. And if we go to our 2D plan, we can see how that's happening across these lights here. Okay. We'll also go ahead and take our razors here. Our parts auto group. And we just want to make sure we have intensity on those. Perfect. So select just those. We've got intensity. We're good to go. So back to our 2D plan. We can see the image across the 2D plan as it sits. We can bring up the intensity like with this submaster on these darts and we can see that we now see light coming out of them. We'll grab those uh, masters on the razors, turn those on, and we, we see something going on there as well. Perfect. So this is fully pixel mapped. We see the representation here on the screen, and even the background is customizable as well if we go into edit mode. Pop out our options, there's a transparency setting. All the way to the right is basically a TV screen. You can see on the NX4 surface, this video file is optimized for pixel mapping. It plays perfectly smoothly, and we're able to see the result. If we scale back the transparency, we don't see the file as much, but in live mode, we see its effect on our fixtures. Now, Dylos is a whole lot more than just playing a piece of media on fixtures. Let's go ahead and dial something else in. So I've got a source here. I'm going to slow it down a little. And now we have effects one and two, as well as our mapping. There's a lot we can do with this. So say we go here to our effect one. We go to an effect here. There are a lot of different effects available in this library. So here I've just created this circular effect. And for this example, I'll actually change the source. It's completely independent. So I'm going to go select all of these just so it's a little easier to work with. Go to my media tab. This time we're going to grab this lines. And we see that this line now goes from the source where it's moving outwards. It's got the effect placed on top of it. That is this circle effect, this lines effect. We can mirror it. There's a lot of different things we can do that make some really cool effects across our lights. All of these effects are also customizable. So there's a lot we can do with that too, both via the effects in our regular parameters, as well as just changing the effect itself. But it doesn't stop here. So Playing media and these pixels, as we discussed, is just part of the dialos magic. But the other part are making some certain effects that uh, may not be as easy to make in the regular effects generator. Things that are a little bit outside of its scope. Like, for example, if I go here to mapping on dialos here, the default mapping of this monochrome content is intensity, RGB, and CMY. So, if there's media that addresses intensity or color mixing systems, it's going to work, and we've seen that, right? We'll switch to a colored, we could switch to a colored media. Boom. And we see colors mapping, as we noticed before, as is intensity. Um, and so we're good to go. I'm going to switch back to that monochrome, though. And for this example, we're now going to go to mapping, choose two preset mode two preset mode now changes the game, okay? We have one preset, two preset, and three preset mapping modes. And what the pixel mapping engine is doing now is stepping outside the realm of pixel mapping because we're now going ahead and we're looking at the visual content. We're seeing where the values are black versus white, you know, where they're 50% gray or higher or on the darker half, or in three preset mode, between the black area of the image, the gray area of the image, and the white area. So in two preset mode, I can use any of my presets right here.
go color, green, preset B, magenta, perfect. And as we can see, I can adjust the value that this preset responds to with this color picker right here. So I'm into preset mode, preset A is black, preset 2, we'll move that to white. Now we have a nice chase between these two colors that matches what happens with the image. Want to change something? Sure, we'll go to effect. Right now it's kind of dancing through every other fixture in a really nice formation. Maybe we turn off the effect, okay? Now, if we choose a different effect, we see it applied to the rig in a different way, in a different way, etc. And so you can begin to see how this is really powerful. How if we modify the way that this works, we get all sorts of different mappings across our lights. And this is really powerful. Not only that, but we're just going to record this as a regular cue. So maybe I place it here. Save it as a cue, and it's ready to go. That's all that it takes. Whether you're working with a pixel mapped fixture or not, you're going to see this work. Let's look at an example with pan tilt. In this case, I'm going to select my darts, head over to Dialos, go ahead to this zone here, and let's go ahead for media and grab this one, which is kind of random. Perfect, it's across our whole zone here. Excellent. And then we'll go ahead, go to our mapping, turn on two preset mode, go here to our pan tilt, preset A, preset B, and now we've got an effect between them. Don't like how the effect is spread across them? It's kind of random, sure. Go ahead and choose something different. We'll see the lights react. In particular, something like this might work well, but we've got to tweak it in a little bit. So I'll go to my source tab this time. I'm just going to take the rotation angle. And now I've rotated it so it's vertical. Perfect. Then I'll go ahead on the speed slider here. We'll just slow down the speed of that media. And then we've got something that's more of an interesting effect. Again, the two preset or three preset modes can work with any parameter. So we can very quickly on the fly go in our programming and maybe we record what we've got here as a queue. I want it to be a regular queue list. Perfect. I'm going to clear and play. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select just my source. Maybe I want to change to a different media here, like this one. Find one that we like here. Speed it back up. And we'll record that. And then, just for kicks, we'll keep running the same thing. But this time, we're going to select our zone, and we're going to switch the preset mapping. Go to mapping. This time we're in two preset mode, but we'll go to some colors. So go here to color, blue, preset B color, amber. And now we've got it happening on blue and amber. Maybe we speed it up a little. Not quite that fast.
Go ahead and record that. Perfect, and then we're ready to go. Now, we've got our dialus playing here, doing this pan tilt. Maybe we press another cue switch to color. Then we switch to a different piece of media. It changes the mapping. Then maybe we go back to it being a pan tilt effect. At the end of the day, dialus is a completely new and different way of thinking of working with lighting and with effects across our light. It can be as simple as pixel map type effects where we're running video across our lights. But it can be much more complex than that as we bring in different colors and different mappings between our presets that are already in our show, we can begin to get new, interesting, and more dynamic effects. For more on Dylos, just like effects, you'll definitely want to check out the Alation Education Center on the Alation website for more. At this point, we've covered the basics that it takes to get a show up and running and make some great lighting here on the NX4. Over the next few videos, we're going to talk about some things like editing and configuring so that you get more comfortable with other parts of the interface. Let's dive in.